Are you finding long videos difficult to pay attention to? Are you finding books difficult to read? Are you finding your mind just skipping off the page or your like eyes just can't seem to focus on anything? If so, you may be suffering from digital dementia or what I prefer to call digital amnesia. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can tackle this, how you can overcome it, extend your attention span, and come out on top by balancing long form content with short form content and preserving the health of your brain and your mind and your memory. That's coming right up. Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. Look, if you're new here, get subscribed so you don't miss anything. We cover a lot about how to improve your memory, how to preserve your memory and your brain from technology and get the best out of technology because it is pretty awesome. And uh, it doesn't have to lead to the digital dementia and the digital amnesia that it is ha having a terrible effect on so many people. So I don't want you to miss anything. And you know, if you haven't been to magneticmerrymethod.com, we talk about this quite a bit. This topic is actually the most popular topic on the site historically. And so I'd love for you to be able to avail yourself of that information. Now, there's three reasons really why long form content is so good for you. The first is that it does extend your attention span because of course you're using your attention span for longer periods of time. That's how you get long attention span. You actually apply it. Now, there's a post on the site about note taking and note taking in different ways. So you can go and check that out and you'll find it's really, really powerful. We did a YouTube Live also about note taking, so if you like watching live replays, that's available to you as well. Links down in the description below. And basically you're just training yourself to pay attention in ways that make it not boring and allow you to get the most out of the time that you spend and really, really focus on extending your attention span. Because look, Here's the thing about long form content. It is often filled with what seems like redundant, useless information. Things will have a lot of throat clearing at the beginning and you'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is a deviation from the main topic. Just get to the point, come on, like where's the meat, as so many people say. And what they don't understand is that actually 90% of communication is redundant no matter what you do. And actually the brain needs that. It's where the actual communication happens. Have you ever heard the thing about reading between the lines? Well, how can you read between the lines if there aren't a whole bunch of lines, right? We actually need context, we need introductions, we need conclusions, we need deviations, we need examples, we need people to actually think out loud. We need demonstrations of thinking out loud in order to actually follow along thought, right? To see thought demonstrated and to actually process thought in our minds. It's not a bad thing if you skip in and out, if you sometimes drift off and do some mind wandering. There's a lot of science around mind wandering. There's a great book called Rest, which is about the power of mind wandering. The question is, are you actually giving yourself enough opportunity to have mind wandering in the context of information that is helping you learn? And are you retaining enough of that information? And do you have enough attention span to actually notice the information that's there? So all that note taking stuff will help you. But the point is, is to stop telling people to get to the meat, because that's just ridiculous. I don't know where that came from, but it's just not really conducive to anything. It's not all meat, right? If you just had, like I've heard people say that most books, the things that are on those books can just be written on an index card and then you can go out and do all those things and become a trillionaire, right? Well, if that were true, then the world would be packed with trillionaires. The reality is, is that in order for anyone to get anywhere, they have to actually process information over longer periods of time, they have to see it in context, they have to have perspective, they need to be packaged in, in particular ways, and you need to submit yourself to the journey that the author has created. Now, that said, there are different ways to read books. I've talked about the different ways to read books. You don't have to read them all in order and so forth, but there are benefits from doing so. There's reasons why authors choose to create things in the order that they create them. There's reasons why videos are made in the ways that they're made and so forth. And there is power to understanding intention. And there is power to submitting yourself to human communication 
as that communication was created and not expecting everyone to commu create communication that fits your consumption preference. If you know your con consumption preference, that's great, but is your cons consumption preference actually getting you the outcomes that you want, right? Well, chances are that it isn't. And so that what you need to do is practice multiple kinds of consumption in order to extend your attention span, extend your ability to consume information in different forms and actually get benefits from them. Because if you don't do that, then you're probably missing out. So that's the first thing. The second thing that long form content is gonna do for you is it enables you to juggle multiple thoughts in your mind at the same time. This follows from the point about um, hearing thinking out loud but it's, it's, it's a little bit different than hearing thinking out loud and following thoughts as they're thunk out loud, seeing the process by which someone reaches conclusions and so forth. It's also actually holding multiple thoughts in your mind at the same time, weighing things, comparing things, uh, contrasting things, and so on, and enabling yourself to actually do that in your mind. And so this is, can involve also mental rotation, which we've talked about before on uh, uh, YouTube Live. If you want to check out that replay, the link is in the description below. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to hold multiple thoughts in the mind at the same time, compare them, and then as you're listening, yeah, so your mind wanders a little bit, but then you'll pick up a point, you'll make the connection in your mind to a point that came before, you'll start to make comparisons, contrasts, you'll actually do things that the speaker or the author aren't, isn't explicitly doing, never intended to do, you're ahead of their curve, or you're having original thoughts based on the thoughts that they made, and you're actually collaborating with that content creator, and you deserve all the hallmarks of genius that come from putting two and two together, right? But you can't do that if you don't submit yourself to long form content, and if you don't enable yourself to have multiple thoughts in your mind at the same time, which is why uninterrupted, silent, sustained reading or uninterrupted, silent, sustained viewing of long form content is so powerful, so beneficial for you. All you have to do is figure out a way to submit yourself to it. The final reason I'll talk about today for why this is so powerful is because you know you're not going to necessarily take action on everything. And if it's just like, hey guys, I got three tips for you and you're gonna get them all in three minutes or less and yada, 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 your brain isn't gonna translate that instantly into, oh, well, now I'm gonna go out and do all those three things. What it's gonna do is be like, yeah, this was three minutes gone, forgotten. Not always, I don't wanna generalize, but when you think about all of the six tips and the seven tips and the 21 tip posts that you've read on the internet and so forth, how much of that have you ever taken action on? Really? There are, of course, cases where it is super powerful, and of course, I myself do it too. It's pretty awesome to, you know, when I've worked on uh, learning uh, Photo P or whatever, this software, that software, and I just need some quick tips, then it's pretty awesome when the dude is just not, you know, clearing his throat for seven minutes before he finally just shows the tip and he's just like, okay, here's what you do, bang, 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 and here's how you do it in 2018 or 17 or 16 or whatever it is when you bought the software. Yeah, that's pretty cool when they just get right down to it. But when it's things that are actually monumental, it's not so cool and we often dismiss it. You know what I'm talking about. There's many, many examples where it's just oodles and oodles of life improvement tips and so forth and it's like the top 857,000 self-improvement tips that you need to change your life today. It's just like a wash, you just, yeah, blah, 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 blah. We don't value it, we don't take action on it, and we don't take action on it precisely because it's just this ocean of cool, feel-good things, dopamine spike for about 15 seconds, and then we're out of there, and it's gone. So, what we really want is, yeah, some of those things, some of the time, yeah, that's a cool idea, but to catch ourselves in it, is it really cool? Are we really gonna do anything with that? Well, maybe shouldn't we just like maybe get a book on just one of those points, submit ourselves to the longer topic, see the history of it, uh, understand the many different people who have done it before and what they've done with it and how they've done with it, the psychologists and the 
whoever, the athletes, whatever it might be, and try to see it in the largest possible sense so that we actually have an enriched understanding of it that is substantial, that is weighty, that is truly the meat, right? Wouldn't that be much, much better? Wouldn't that be cool if you actually had that and then you use memory techniques to make sure that you actually have it all in your memory or much of it, as much as really is relevant? on your fingertips, just like that, on the tip of your tongue, so you're able to just rattle it off anytime in writing or when you're speaking, or just for your own personal enjoyment in the silence of your own head. Don't you think that would be cool? I think it's really cool. I know it's cool. I've seen it help many, many people. It's certainly helped me, and it's very good. It's very good to be able to do that. So, really, if you want to have an extended attention span and the ability to just enjoy knowledge because it's in your mind, well, then long form content is gonna get you there a lot faster than short form content. It's also gonna help preserve your brain. It's gonna strengthen your memory. It's gonna give you the ability to juggle multiple thoughts in your mind at the same time, make connections, make contrast, all kinds of wonderful and amazing things that only happen when you submit yourself to the glory, the power, and the honor of information and stop calling it redundant. Stop denigrating information that has a little bit of an introduction to it and isn't the meat, you know? Understand human communication. Understand that things take time. Understand that context matters and understand that the things worth knowing are never instantaneous and in list form with tips, you know? It's, it, 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 you, you've, you've gotta have an understanding of what you need to know you as a learner and you do that by reading multiple books on the same topic sometimes you do it by reading them multiple times and so if you want some tips on how to read books right multiple times I got a link down below for you about that too on my rereading strategy and why that I read at least one book again per month it's super powerful for your memory for your attention span and for your ability to have cognitive complexity. And I want you to have cognitive complexity because it's what's gonna keep your brain sharp for life and that's gonna lead to better brain health. It's gonna lead to a better life. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I hope you'll come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com. If you don't have my free video course, it's gonna give you some PDFs that'll teach you and help you create memory palaces. It'll give you some videos on that, four videos in total. That's at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. And just come visit me at magneticmemorymethod.com in general. Follow up on the links below. Hit the thumbs up if you like this. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed and hit that little bell icon so that you can join us when we go live. Love to meet with you. And until we have a chance to speak again, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about your attention span and long form content. And until we have a chance to meet again, keep yourself magnetic.